Hi there. It's Through the Bible in One Year, Day 127. They have us reading two chapters today in different books. One is in 2 Samuel 7, and the other one is 1 Chronicles 17, and they are virtually identical. It's weird that they put them together and make us read them twice, but we want to read the whole Bible in a year, so we'll struggle through it. The Lord's Covenant with David. When the king had settled into his palace and the Lord had given him rest on every side from all his enemies, the king said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a cedar house while the ark of God sits inside tent curtains. So Nathan told the king, Go and do all that is on your mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word from the Lord came to Nathan, Go to my servant David and say, This is what the Lord says. Are you to build me a house to dwell in? From the time I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until the day I have not dwelt in a house. Instead, I have been moving around with a tent as my dwelling. <clears throat> in all my journeys with all the Israelites, have I ever spoken a word to one of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people, asking why haven't you built me a house of cedar? So now this is what we are to say to my, to say to my servant David. This is what the Lord of armies says. I took you from pasture from the pasture, from tending the flock, to be a ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies bef before you. I will make a great name for you like that of the greatest on the earth. I will designate a place for my people Israel and plant them so that they may live there and not be disturbed again. Evildoers will not continue to oppress them as they have done ever since the day I ordered judges to be over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you, the Lord himself will make a house for you. When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will rise up after you, your descendant, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will discipline him with the rod of men and the blows, and blows from mortals. But my faithful love will never leave him as it did when I removed it from Saul whom I remove them from before you. Your house and kingdom will endure before me forever, and your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported all these words to, of this entire vision to David. David's prayer of thanksgiving. Nathan was talking about Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. Then David went in and sat in the Lord's presence and says, Who am I, Lord God, and what, a, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? What have you done? What you have done so far was a little thing to you, Lord God, for you have also spoken about your servant's house in the distant future. And this is a revelation for mankind, Lord God. What more can David say to you? You know your servant, Lord God, because of your word and according to your will, you have revealed all these great things to your servant. <clears throat> this, is why you, this is why you are great, Lord God. There is no one like you and there is no God besides you, as all we have heard confirms. And who is like your people Israel, God, came to one nation on earth in order to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for himself and to perform for them great and awesome acts. Driving out nations and their gods before your people, you redeemed yourself from Egypt. You established our people Israel to be your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now, Lord God, fulfill the promise forever that you have made to your servant and, and his house. Do as you have promised so that your name will be exalted forever. When it is said, the Lord of armies is God over Israel, the house of your servant David will be established before you. Since you, Lord of armies, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant when you said, I will build a house for you. Therefore, your servant has found the courage to pray this prayer to you. Lord God, you are God. Your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now please bless your servant's house so that it will continue before you forever. For you, Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing, your servant's house will be blessed forever. Okay, that's Second Samuel 7. Now, First Chronicles 17. It's going to sound really familiar. When David settled into his palace, he said to the prophet Nathan, Look, I am living in a cedar house while the, while the Ark of the Lord's Covenant is under tent curtains. So Nathan told David, Do all that is on your mind, for God is with you. But that night, deja vu, huh? that night the word of God came to Nathan, Go to my servant and say, This is what the Lord says. You are, not a, you are not the one to build me a house to dwell in. 
From the time I brought Israel out of Egypt until today, I have not dwelt in a house. Instead, I have moved from one tent site to another, and from one tabernacle location to another. In all my journeys throughout Israel, have I ever spoken a word to even one of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, asking, Why haven't you built me a house of cedar? So now this is what you are to say to my servant David. This is what the Lord of Armies says. I took you from the pasture, from tending a flock, to be a ruler over my people Israel. I have... I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will make a name for you like that of the greatest on earth. I will de designate a place for my people Israel and plant them so that they may live there and not be disturbed again. Evildoers will not continue to oppress them as they have done. Ever since the day I ordered judges, judges to be over my people Israel, I will also subdue all your enemies. Furthermore, I declare to you that the Lord himself will build a house for you. When your time comes to... To be with your ancestors, I will raise up after you your descendant, one, one who is one of your sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. I will not remove my faithful love from him as I removed it from the one who was before you, Saul. I will appoint him over my house and my kingdom forever, and his throne will be established forever. Nathan reported all of these words and his entire vision to David. Say almost word for word. And David's prayer of thanksgiving. Then, the, then King David went in, sat in the Lord's presence, and said, Who am I, Lord, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? This was a little thing to you, God, for you have spoken about your servant's house in the distant future. You regard me as a man of distinction, Lord God. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? You know your servant. Lord, you have done this great thing, making known all these great promises for the sake of your servant according to your will. Lord, there is no one like you. There is no God besides you, as we have all, as, as all we have heard confirms. And who is like your people Israel? God, you came to one nation on earth to redeem a people for yourself, to make a name for yourself through great and awesome works. By driving out nations before your people, you redeemed from Egypt. You made your people Israel your own people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Now, Lord, let the word you have spoken concerning your servant and his house be confirmed forever and do as you have promised let your name be confirmed and magnified forever in the saying the lord of armies the god of israel is god over israel may the house of your servant david be established before you since you my god have revealed to your servant you will build him a house your servant has found courage to pray in your presence lord you indeed are god and you have promised this good thing to your servant so now you have been pleased to bless your servant's house that it may continue before you forever for you lord have blessed it and it is blessed forever there you go so that was kind of short huh come on it's not my marking is not working here oh there we go. And what are we doing tomorrow? Oh, look, more Psalms. 25, 29, 33, 36, 39. Five Psalms tomorrow. So there you have it. That's today, the story of David. We talked about Solomon. And we know Solomon's temple was the greatest. And he was the richest and wisest king that Israel ever had. So... I'm looking forward to that. We study his Proverbs every single day, you know, and we've been doing it for nine months now. We're on the ninth time through Proverbs. We're going to commit them all to memory. So check that out. Also, catch up on any you may have missed. You want to say you read the whole Bible in a year. So till next time, keep reading. See ya.